Hello and welcome to the Young Author Pod. And today we will discuss the pathogenesis of Leg Calvey Perthes disease. Leg Calvey Perthes disease, or popularly called the Perthes disease, is a self-limited affection of hip in young children characterized by interruption of blood supply of the femoral head leading to partial or complete avascular necrosis followed by subchondral fracture revascularization and repair of the dead bone the exact cause of the perthes disease is not known numerous theories have been proposed but Interruption of vascular supply of the femoral head is the most widely accepted etiologic theory. Blood supply of the femoral head in this age group has a peculiar pattern. Between 4 to 8 years of the age, epiphyseal plate becomes a firm barrier between epiphysis and metaphysis and the lateral epiphyseal vessels are the only source to the epiphysis. To learn about the blood supply of femoral head and its variation with age, please check out our video on the blood supply of femoral head. You can find the link in description. The pathological process goes through several stages which may last up to 3 to 4 years. The blood supply to the capital femoral epiphysis is interrupted and all or part of the bony nucleus of the femoral head stops growing and becomes dead. Initially, it still looks normal on the plain x-ray but stops enlarging and soon appears dense and smaller than the uninvolved side. The cartilaginous part of the femoral head being nourished by synovial fluid remains viable and becomes thicker than normal. This is seen as increased joint space on the radiograph. There may also be thickening and edema of the synovium and capsule. As the time passes, within weeks or possibly even days of infarction, a number of changes begin to appear. The dead marrow is replaced by granulation tissue, new capillaries grow in and the bone is revascularized. Osteoblasts produce new lamellae on the dead trabeculae, producing the appearance of increased density on the X-rays. Osteoclasts reabsorb the dead bone, particularly in the subchondral area. Some of the dead trabecular fragments are resorbed and replaced by fibrous tissue. The alternating areas of sclerosing and fibrosis appear on the X-rays as fissuring of the epiphysis. Up to this stage, the condition is called potential Perthes disease. That means if the repair process is rapid and complete, the bony architecture may be restored before the femoral head loses its shape. If the repair process is slow and if shearing forces on the femoral head exceeds strength of the weakened subchondral bone, then subchondral fracture may occur and the bony epiphysis may collapse and subsequent growth of the femoral head and neck will be distorted. This marks the clinical onset of true leg calvi perthes disease. The collapse of trabeculae underlying the fracture occludes new capillaries and the bone resorption occurs. The head becomes oval or flattened like the head of a mushroom and enlarged laterally. The neck is often short and broad. Slowly, the femoral head is displaced laterally in relation to the acetabulum. Reossification and healing takes place with variable functional results. Any residual deformity is likely to be permanent. Radiographic images depict the anatomic changes in the femoral head and neck. Radiographically, the Perthes disease can be classified into four stages. In the initial stage, one of the first signs of this condition is failure of the femoral ossific nucleus to increase in size because of lack of blood supply. 
the affected femoral head appears smaller than the opposite unaffected ossific nucleus. The femoral ossific nucleus also appears radiodense. This relative increase in radiodensity may be caused by osteopenia of the surrounding bone or an increase in the mass of bone per unit area. Widening of the medial joint space is due to epiphyseal cartilage hypertrophy. The physial plate is irregular and the metaphysis is blurry and radiolucent. In this stage, radiographically, the repair aspects of the disease become more prominent. The bony epiphysis begins to fragment and there are areas of increased radiolucency and increased radiodensity. The increased radiodensity at this stage may be caused by new bone forming on the old bone and thickening of existing trabeculae. The subchondral radiolucent zone, that is the crescent sign, results from subchondral stress fracture and the extent of this zone determines the extent of the necrotic fragment. The third radiographic stage is the reparative or reossification phase. Radiologically, normal bone density returns, alterations in the shape of femoral head and neck become apparent. Changes depend on the severity and duration of the disease. The femoral head may be nearly normal or may demonstrate flattening of the articular surface with widening of head and neck of the femur. So this was a brief idea of pathogenesis of the Perthes disease. We will discuss the various classification systems for the Perthes disease in our next video. If you want more such videos, please let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram, links are in the description. We will be back with another video in orthopedics. See you soon.